Craig Adams here from Winning Film School and today I'm doing a, another post commentary. This is the fourth one and this is going to be for Jesse and Rebby's six minute highlight film uh, filmed in Vermont. I shot this by myself and you'll kind of see you know all the little tricks and uh, things that I did to try to make it seem like there are more like two or three shooters there even though I was running around with tripods and cameras doing it all by myself. Uh, I had a day or two. I stayed there overnight. You know I shot the rehearsal so uh, it was a really fun wedding. Um, really experimented with some stuff and I thought it turned out great. So let's just get to it and check out the beginning. So you'll notice, like always, I have my 2.35 aspect ratio, which is a PNG that I just put on top of my video. And sometimes, you know, I export in this aspect ratio, it depends, you know. YouTube is actually taking a video that looks like this and eliminate asking if you want to eliminate the black bars which is interesting mm -hmm. because it used to be just vimeo that could uh you know play back videos in different aspect ratios like 2.35 so uh, that's weird and you'll also notice that i start with this little black beginning like a half a second and then go into the music and my, the beginning of my film uh half a second in <laughs> My advice to you is on your wedding. I love to start with piano. I love to start with some sentimental thesis statement, you know, some some kind of dialogue that summarizes the entire film. And uh, you'll also notice this bride and groom shot right here. So I start with who I'm talking about right off the bat, so you know, Jesse and Rebby, and uh, start with this location. So we kind of know where we are, what kind of day it is, what season it is. Uh, and one thing that I want to go through in this post commentary is the color correction for the shots because I did some interesting stuff with LUTs. I used them incorrectly. <laughs> so I color corrected and then my grading I, I did with LUTs. And uh, you know, 100% would be insane, especially if there were skin tones, but there's no skin tones in this shot. So I'm using this Fujifilm Rec, 7, Rec 709. Um, and uh, it really gives this interesting blue in the shadows and yellow in the highlights. So um, I think it looks really cool, adds some dimension. And you'll see me using that in a lot of different clips uh, in the future. My advice to you is on your wedding day, you'll notice the climbing rope. Allow this moment to sink in. The parents. Amir and, I and the thing is, I was using my 70 to 200 for this and I actually broke it. I like damaged it a couple weeks ahead before this wedding. And uh, they sent it back to me after the repair, but the I, I, IS was just not working. Just as Amir. You can notice that shake. Like it's, it's insane. I had to take it back like twice because I. Like, I couldn't convince them that it wasn't just working. Just Amir and I worked together for a long time before we got married. Just as mom and dad worked together for a long time before they got married. Boom. This could and then this, you know, this little hit with the piano pulls us into the present. I wanted that to this look way different than this color-wise. So this looks different than that. Just so we, I help with that transition there. I think it's a cool little transition. This could be seen as just a natural step in your relationship. So this audio is being recorded from this mic because I was tapping into the mixer, but uh, I want to show you a little bit of the audio sweetening that I did. Um, so Final Cut has this loudness feature, which it senses the clip and then you apply it to bring the levels up. And it also pulls the lows up a little higher than the highs so that it kind of normalizes the track a little bit. So that's helpful for almost every, you know, dialogue that I get. I kind of do that to plus or minus, you know, I don't go overboard because it will distort it a bit. Um, but what I also do with something like this is, um, mm, did it show it? Yeah, I was messing around with it. So what I have for this audio is a... Uh, for a long time before they got married. I pull this, this down. It's just a natural step in your relationship. And it's hard for you to tell it just because of this video, but in between the talking, there's a... There's a... Uh, there's definitely an amount of noise that is... You can hear. Before they got married. This could be... And this little move right here just eliminates that completely. And sometimes I'll even bump the mids a little bit. And that helps out a lot. For a long time before they got married, this could be seen as just, just to focus on the dialogue coming out, you know, the vocals rather than whatever the mic picked up. So I can eliminate some of those frequencies and then strengthen especially what I want. In your relationship. Okay. So I love so these two way, shots. 
this and the way going that to your this relationship tomorrow Boom. is just as it was yesterday. I like that. But at the same time, embrace this moment and its meaning. It's a great shot. The act of. So I was shooting on six Ds. Uh, I had one of my own, and then I rented another one from Lens Pro to go. So it was nice to have the same color, same you know picture profile, same everything for two cameras. Meaning. I think the this is a 70 to, to 70 to 200. Everyone yeah. here today and how it represents a whole new beginning. This is Justine Rebbe. And for this wedding, um, I was trying to keep to 150th shutter speed. Uh, obviously for like outdoor stuff, I had to jack it up a little bit and you can kind of tell in the motion. Better in front of everyone here today and how it represents a whole. But I wasn't keeping my iris open. So like if I had a 1.4 lens, like I wouldn't keep it at 1.4 or even close to that. If I was outside, it'd probably be like 5.6 f-stop, so. Everyone here today and how it represents a whole new beginning. Just to help with the sharpness. So once again, you'll see this essay format. This is my introduction. It's about 40 to 50 seconds. It's like a little film all by itself and that transitions into the new song. You know, we know where we are, who we are, what it's about, you know, they're getting married and stuff, their names. And then we go into the beginning of the film, the beginning of the day, I guess, you know? Because, you know, the there is really no linear timeline here, but this is like the beginning, this will go to the end, so. Uh, it just has to make sense for the viewer, I guess. So we're gonna establish where we are and what things look like with flowers. And roofs and trucks. So some of these colors are pretty extreme, but I wanted to experiment with a lot of uh, color grading this little pull in with the sound really makes a difference. Cause if it sounds good, it looks good. Okay, so I got my Edelkrone with like a 24 mil on here. And one thing that I love, I'm not doing it here, but I could have, is I could have done a digital uh, one of these as we did the dolly, just because I have these letterboxing and uh, it's cropped, you know? Good reactions. And I usually don't show the bride before she gets her hair and makeup done more than this, but her reaction was so cute, I had to put it in. So I shot all of these with monopod, but I'm like, I'm kind of experimenting with different ways to shoot this kind of bride prep and like people getting stuff ready in the morning. Uh, it's like handheld is something that I'm looking into, like just to add some kind of motion as I'm panning or tilting the camera. Uh, it makes things a little more interesting because there's a huge difference between shaky footage and handheld footage. So I would get some kind of Zacuto, you know, I forget Marauder. That's what I like. It's like a little handheld rig. It's pretty awesome. It's a slider. Like shots like this, you know, you necessarily don't need it wide. Like I've found that like prep stuff and detail stuff is almost always better when it's tighter. So like a hundred mil, the hundred macro F.2 L IS is like my favorite go-to lens for stuff like this because it just eliminates the subjects as much like as it can to focus on what they're doing rather than like what the big picture is here. It's a nice slider shot. So like, Going into the color correction again, like I've got the color grading and the color correction. So this, I kind of just like use the histograms and kind of pulled more contrast out of the image. And then this really added that color just to make things interesting. Almost like a really, really fall look, but I really like it. So this is a slider shot. I, it took me like five tries and then they finally walked by and I'm like, all right, I'm ready. So I practiced a bunch before this happened because it's a pan down, uh, uh, a, 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 what is it? Yeah, it's a right to left slide as I panned right on the slider. So it's like three motions. Adds a little bit of slight, you can see the slider aspect of it, but it just, I think it's a really cool shot. And that's so much better than just having like 
nothing. Like having the people walk, like you just really have to take your time and just know what's about to happen and just really find that perfect shot and timing. Almost like, yeah, like these like kind of shots right here would just be good handheld. You can tell like there's a little bit of motion just because I was doing that with a monopod, but like, ugh, almost like a handheld rig would be better. Yeah. And sometimes I like to experiment with uh, the direction and push of the slider. So this is like an odd movement, but it works. And I think I had another shot that I was testing here. Yeah, that just wasn't good, so. <laughs> Stabilizer saved the fuck out of me here. This shot was crazy uh, shaky. I'll let it buffer for a sec. Render, render. Super shaky. So like that's almost unusable, so. Stabilizer really helped me there. I like that lens flare. It's great reaction. It's kind of funny. I just love this natural light and like I'm I'm almost over a, a little exposed. Like most people would overexpose this way even more. It's like I'm learning to expose way lower because you can always bring it up in post. Uh, I don't think I did much. Yeah, I didn't do much with the exposure, but like Oh man, it helps. Always better to underexpose than overexpose. Anybody watch me get ready. It's kind of, it's kind of funny. Kind of weird. Yeah, you, you think about it a little bit differently. Tone change, new song. Oh yeah. So maybe I had a little bit of 180 rule. This is a little disorienting. It would This would have helped if I had another person, like another clip in between, but uh, yeah, it's fine. I just love the color and the slight wobble and shake to it. That little move at the end isn't the great, but I love that shot. And just muting this, like just with the piano, the subtleness changes the tone so much. So I redid this. So after the dress was done, we just had the bridesmaid redo it real quick. So shaky again, but I like these these close-ups. They're pretty good. A little shaky. That shot's beautiful. Continue. Okay, so let me let me talk about this first look. <laughs> this is one of the worst first looks I've ever done. And this is really, you know, moments like this is what suffers when you're shooting by yourself. So like I had talked to the the photographers, but really there was not much that was gonna help me, you know. I just, I swear, they just don't get it. Like, some of them just don't really get it at all. So I got this, like, establishing shot. He's blocked, so I couldn't use that. And then, like, it's just, I don't know. I just wasn't on my game at this point. So, like, you'll notice in the raw footage, like, she's coming, and, like, she's just blocked the whole time, and then we have these people in the background, and then, I got a photographer there and like, what was I supposed to do? Like, that's a terrible shot. Like the people are awkward in the back. Like I can't see either of their faces. Uh, I'm missing the best part right now. I should be getting this. Finally got my shot. And like, it just like, it's distor disorienting because I had to cross my 180. And like, this is good stuff, but it just, it, it breaks the rule and it's just a terrible background, like that tree right there. Like, it's just, I talked to them and I, we had talked about it, but they just kind of didn't care. So you can see both of them are over there. So their 180 is completely the opposite of mine and that's not what we want. Like, uh, and then this tree is right in their face. Like I should have known that he would like step that way, but it's just like, this really isn't a good spot for this to happen. And that uh, oh, was just terrible. So you'll see this. This is the best I could get out of this. <laughs> All right, so this is also interesting. So I wanted this wide shot. It's, it's even cropped in a little bit. Okay, so, and 
what I've got right here is a PNG. So without the PNG, you'll see the photographer come in, but I wanted, I wanted that clip to last that long. So with, without, with, without. So what I did is uh, just to isolate uh, this PNG is I took a screenshot of this, brought it into Photoshop and then cropped out um, where, you know, part of it and uh, No phones. Uh, so yeah, I cropped out part of that, and that was uh, that worked. You know, it's kind of just like masking, I guess, but it's like a DIY like you know way to do it, I guess. <laughs> So it's like super emotional, the music swells, good stuff. And I really try to not shoot so much of this like photography stuff, you know, the photo sessions, but I just get a little bit of stuff. Details. Build a life together that is bright with the laughter of children. So I bring in more of that ceremony and I've got a lot of uh, overlapping uh, audio to you know help illustrate what we're looking at. May you build a life together that is bright with the laughter of children and the smile of friends. May your home be a haven from the tensions of our time and a wellspring of strength. May it be the one place where you most want to be. Super dramatic. And may the years deal gently with you. So, uh, I think this is all shot with 100 macro. I really like that for detail shots. Yeah, for sure. From the tensions of our time. I think there's quite a bit. And with the macro shots, I do a lot more uh, contrast and warming, you know. So this is the original color correction, color grading. And a wellspring of strength. May it be the one place where you most. I definitely put a stabilizer on that. And may the years deal gent. See, I keep telling myself I wanted to get rid of that. That little. So that, honestly, like, boom, boom, copy, paste, zoom in a little bit, let it fucking buffer. Like this is so easy to fix. I should have done it. I just didn't. It's as simple as putting a crossfade on a moment of silence and just matching that up exactly. And now check it. Most want to be. And maybe years. That's like, that took five seconds. I should have done that. <laughs> My bad. But like I do that all the time for like little clicks or pops that you don't want, you know? Want to be. And may the years deal gently with you, walking together. It's a little slider shot. You find much more in life than either of you would have 100 macro. Other. Lots of, uh, every time I use the 100 macro, I, I do a crazy amount of uh, contrast. Yeah. So, contrast, grading. It kind of kills the detail of the paper, but it just makes it so much punchier. Transition. Change the entire tone. More fun, quick, punchy. Always get the grandmas. Grandma one, grandma two. Nice little chatter sound. Like, I took this from what? This is 82? Yeah, I took this entire sound section from this. Uh, this whole section right here. The figure eight <clears throat> is the preferred knot of climbers and the knot that has literally connected Revy and I kind of like that. <laughs> you know, that might like seem like a mess up, but I like having the little heads pop up. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good action to have people standing up. I always try to get that shot. So, you'll notice that I'm over here on 
is this the third camera? No, this is my second camera. So this is my 6D on a wide, I think like a 35. So that's just getting like, in case I need to cut to anything. Cause I'm standing like right here on a monopod. Actually, I think that's me right there. Yeah. Uh, with a 7200, no, I had a, I think I had a hundred. Yeah, I had a hundred. Cause the 7200 is right here on a tripod ready to go. So all I have to do is just run over bring this camera over, set that up, and then I have that, you know. Uh, so yeah, 100, for sure. Connected Rebbe and Jesse for the past six years on their climbing adventures. Although simple to tie, the figure eight knot is one of the strongest. So this was super shaky and I didn't have much time, but it worked, uh, just enough. The figure eight knot is one of the strongest there is. It will not break under pressure and in fact will only become stronger. The harder the pull, the stronger the bond. Really good dialogue that goes with that. So I had a couple seconds, so I did a slider shot. You know, super, super easy if you know you want to get it. We pray for Rebby and Jesse that they may live together That's a good shot. in love and faith. There's just always these freaking speakers, you know. <laughs> Can't get away from them. In love and faithfulness to the end of their lives. I like that you could see the reflection. And some people get the kiss from like the side. I think this is the best angle of the kiss. You know, if I'm, if I have this locked down and I know that's good with focus, I'll go off to the side so that I can get reaction. So like during the kiss, I'm getting the reaction. Cause this only happens, well, like, I don't know. Gotta get that. So Rebby and Jesse, you've tied the knot. You <laughs> I like this golf cart today. with a little bit of sound. Your points are set. But like, look at that background, it's so beautiful. Uh, so good. This is the dopest, this is the dopest cocktail hour I've ever done. Your points are set. And little chalkboard shit, delicious foods and waters, together. summer sausage, you know it. Your life together. So good. We admire you, we love you, so climb on. I touched it, I should have cut. Tone change, boom. So this is me. This is me going crazy on a glide cam with a uh, 24. Yeah. Just running all over. Having the sound is important. So I did a lot of these details with monopods. So I don't know, you know, it's, it's a toss up. Do I do the handheld kind of like really tight telephoto um, handheld look or do I do the very precise tripod uh, motion on the details? Cause I feel like this is a little too shaky for my liking and unmotivated, so. And it can be kind of boring if you use tripods. So I kind of like the handheld. So yeah, it's a 24 mil on a Edelkrone slider. I had to ask a bunch of people to move. And I actually have a second one underneath this that I was testing. That might've been cool, but I kind of just wanted this simple shot. It's beautiful, I like that. Get through all the details, get this 100 macro shot. It's a bit shaky, but it works, I guess. So many slider shots. So this is always tough to get. Like I have, you know, the break in the song, but then I also have this cheering. I want the cheering, but I don't want the music that they play. So I bring that way down. It's annoying having two songs at the same time. You know what I mean? It's weird. Some nice glide cam stuff. But you see, I have like a hundred, I think it's like 70 to 200 at 70 mil on a tripod, just getting that. It's so tough shooting by myself. And then 24 mil on glide cam, yeah. So yeah, shooting by myself again. I've got this, first I set up this Mastercam 
with like a 50 or something. Uh, make sure that's all set. And then I go and do some glide cam stuff real quick. And then I go back and just make sure that I man this. And if they're moving around, they're gonna get out of focus. So it's tough. <laughs> want to thank the yard and like there was so much running around i was doing with this uh these speeches like this is bad framing like this guy's way in the way and like they're they're right here is like ugh, all this head space and that's even with this cropping so it's like distracting this should have been a tighter lens at a better angle and i think i do move it around or something but the yard family for making the most incredible boy <laughs> who's grown up into the most so one thing you'll see is that I, uh, I extended this interlude in the song where there are no lyrics just because I don't want lyrics in the song when I have dialogue. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> so I had to cut it up and then uh, find the moment where uh, the beat hit. So that's like, you know, I changed the song a bit to make it work and it's good to do. The incredible boy <laughs> who's grown up into the most incredible man that my beautiful daughter loves. <laughs> <laughs> she looks so much like her daughter, it's amazing. <laughs> So you'll notice the, the motion blur is a little different. So when I shoot dancing, especially fast fun dancing, I like to have the shutter speed cranked up to like 1 80th, uh, just to get a little bit of that Saving Private, Lar Pri Saving Private Ryan look. It just adds to the fun, the motion, I feel so fortunate to be marrying such a beautiful bride. <laughs> he was a bit drunk. He's so awesome though. So I like these glide cam shots looking up, but they're tough to do. Way easier with the Movi or like an actual steady cam rather than the glide cam, but. She's a boss. I'm so happy for the two of you. Congratulations, everybody. Let's lift the glass. See, this is a better angle for the speeches. I got my act together. Got this nice little reaction here for the bride and groom. This is a good reaction just because of the way that the table was shaped. Everybody, let's lift the glass to the bride and groom. Cheers. But you can tell I wasn't using any additional lighting. So, you know, it's very flat. You can tell there's a bit of ISO. I don't know what I was at, but it's not that great. Um, so this is a, you know, it's a little older of a wedding. So with my new stuff, I'm definitely using lighting and uh, it's much better. Cheers. Yay, sparklers, overexposed. It's good. I would like to get them to kiss here. And then this ring shot, 100 macro on a s slider with all of the lights that you can see, you know. All, all of these lights in the background. And then I have a iPhone light illuminating the rings. And then this is the carabiner. So I tried to use that element. You can tell there's dust on my lens or sensor or whatever. You can definitely tell when that's like that, but I think this is, that's a cool shot. Crazy bokeh. That's it. Yep. Comes in at six minutes, pretty quick, but it, you know, it does a really good job of showing the whole day. But uh, if you have any comments or questions, please let me know. But uh, I'm thinking about doing a post commentary where I actually go through the raw footage rather than the edited film, or maybe both, because it might be interesting to see you know, what I didn't put in the film and why, and uh, my thought process behind where and when I'm shooting, and especially going over like second shooter's footage would be fun. So uh, look for that in the future. Let me know if that's something that you'd like to see. But until then, thank you for watching and see ya.